Good morning, it's Sarah. Welcome to my live video chat, or as some say, live with Sarah. <laughs> I've been thinking about changing the name from Life with Sarah to Coffee with Friends, or maybe Crochet Coffee with Friends, or Coffee and Crochet with Friends. I haven't decided yet. Maybe you can tell me what you think. Sometimes saying Live with Sarah can be just a little bit confusing when I put it over on Face, or I'm sorry, YouTube. And so that's why I've been thinking about changing the name. So I like the idea of crochet coffee with friends or coffee with friends or crochet with friends. You can let me know what you think. Good morning, everyone. Carol, Nicole, Susie, Alicia, Karen, Dana, Karen Huff. I'm so glad you're all here, Linda. And we have a lot to do today. I'm real excited to announce all the winners from our prizes last week. Um, I have to tell you, we had quite a few people that entered. And so last night I was um, putting them in to the random generator and the names were coming up and it was so fun to see some of the f uh, familiar names that were winning some of these prizes as well as some of our new YouTube and Facebook peeps. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're all here. Now, if you'll notice, I'm wearing my new glasses. They're supposed to be glare free, but I'm going to take them off because I don't need to wear them all the time. I just want you to know that I'm looking at you. I see you. I see you. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go ahead and pop those off for now. I'll put them back on later when I need to see something close. Well, I had a wonderful birthday celebration last week. We had so much fun on the live video. And then my granddaughter came over. She's six. She wants to be the next baking challenge on, or the next on the next kids baking challenge, but she's not old enough just yet. But she made a cake. We did this together. We did a, a purple vanilla cake and she made three buttercreams. We did a pink, we did a teal and a purple. And then we put the purple in between the two purples and then we did all kinds of frosting on top and sprinkles and all kinds of fun. And it also was yummy. It was just vanilla, no, no special flavors, but it was a lot of fun. And she's six and, and let me scoot this down so I can say hello to people. But she knows all kinds of baking techniques. She's always giving me hints. All right, let me see here. Here's Tammy and Marlene and Susie and Dawn. Teresa K, Rita, Karen, Tammy again, and Carol, Jennifer, Susan, Julie, and Tina Louise. All right, let's clink in. I want to show you my new mug or my new cup. Clink in. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? My granddaughter gave this to me for my birthday. Well, it was kind of funny because when they came over, my son's like, because, you know, he's like 30 years old. And he said, I picked that cup out, Mom. And, and Zoe, his daughter, said, uh-uh, I did. <laughs> so it was kind of fun. I love the cup. All right, now, what we're going to do is I want to make sure everybody's in here before we get started with saying who all the winners are. And so what I thought we'd do first is answer a couple of questions. I get, um, I've got, I've got one question really, but I get lots and lots of questions about, will you make this pattern? Will you make a video of that pattern? Is this okay? You know, when it comes to crochet patterns. So just so you know, I love to do all kinds of crochet patterns. Thing, uh, you know, my motto is crochet patterns for people, crochet patterns for pooches, and crochet patterns for fun. And so what we're going to do today is answer what kind of patterns I won't make. <laughs> and there's four. Number one, I don't do crochet pattern videos of other people's patterns without permission. I've done a few that they have asked me to, like my daughter or something like that. But I do not do other people's crochet patterns. It's um, just an ethical thing. I don't know that it's uh, legally wrong or right unless the pattern is, of course, copyright. And some people have done mine without permission as well. And I don't like that. I would rather do my own because they always, um, I don't know, I'm not going to go there. But anyway, I don't do other people's crochet patterns that they have written without permission because it, to me it's just ethically not correct. 
All right. The second one, I'm going to put my glasses back on. The second thing I don't do is what I call inappropriate patterns. And inappropriate patterns really has to deal with things that are um, of a sexual nature or something like that body part I don't do that if you want something like that I'm not criticizing you if you make something like that I'm just saying you won't find that on my channel okay the next one I don't do are patterns that have inappropriate language I and I hate with a passion I don't hate very many things but one of the things I just do not like is inappropriate language because I think it's harmful and hurtful and I will never ever do that ever you won't find anything like that I'm not saying you can't of course you'll just have to look somewhere else for it that's all the other one that I don't do is offensive patterns and I put things like uh, political or anything that would any do anything that would be inappropriate of of um, any kind that would be hurtful or harmful again but also it has to do with like someone asked me if i would uh, make something on one side of the political stance or the other and i don't want that in the in what i'm doing everybody has a right to their beliefs of course and i don't i don't tell you where i stand and you don't tell me where you stand when it comes to that sort of thing and i want to keep it out of this out of this area this crochet channel is all about kindness to everyone loving yarn and yarny things and learning how to crochet and i'm not saying those things are right or wrong i'm just saying you won't find them here okay i get lots of questions about these things they'll see something on pinterest or they'll see something um, maybe on Ravelry and it doesn't have a video. And what you can do, if you're looking for something and you see that someone's written a pattern, you can ask that person, do you do videos? Um, I, I would like to see it, you know, displayed out. You know, and sometimes they are someone who does videos and they'll, and they'll put, say, you know, I'll add that to my list. And I do that when people see something. And if you go to my Ravelry.com where I have almost not all of them, but almost all of my patterns there. A lot of them do not have videos yet. And some of them were retesting, updating, making new videos. And some that do have videos that we did them. When I first began, like I said, I did it in such a way that it was more like a answering a question rather than doing a tutorial. And so some of those were redoing as well. So it's always okay to ask a designer if they have a video for that because sometimes they've got lists and things like I do that I'm going through and so I can add that to my list to get to because I try to I try to go with what's going on in other words you know we had Valentine's Day so I was doing a lot of hearty things <laughs> you know St. Patrick's Day is coming up so I've got some fun ways to make some some crochet things for St. Patrick's Day and I like to kind of go with that you know because it's a lot of fun and so if like I said if there's a pattern that I have on my Ravelry and you want to see a video for it and you haven't seen it you can always shoot me a message through Ravelry or you know on the on our Facebook page and I'll take a look at it and see if I can fit it into the list. Sometimes I can, sometimes it, you know, takes a while to get to it, you know, but you know, that way we know as designers what you're looking for. Okay. But I just wanted to answer those questions. Basically, I want to keep my channel child friendly because my grandkids watch it. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right. Now, are you ready to get to the winners? We're going to announce the winners and then we're going to make that little violet. All right. So I'm going to drop my camera to the other one. And if you'll notice, here's our first winner. And what I did is I just wrote their name. Now, what you need to do, the winner that will receive the pattern for this bear hat is Brenda Craig. Brenda Craig, you need to contact Kirsten Holloway Designs, and you'll need to go back. I'm going to put the link underneath this video, and you can go to that link from last week's video, and you can just click on this and tell her I won the bear hat from Sarah's birthday bash. All right. All right. Second winner is you can pick one pattern from the Lavender Chairs patterns, Julia Cox Jennings. Again, go to last week's video, contact the designer, 
tell her you won a pattern from Sarah's birthday bash. All right, there's the first two winners. Winner number three, Teresa Patton. You won a pattern from Ambassador Crochet. I've got that pushed up too high. There we go. You've won a pattern from Ambassador Crochet. Same thing. You can go straight to her Facebook page, or you can go to that video that we did last week and click on her name and just tell her you won a pattern from Sarah's Birthday Bash. All right, now we have Stitches and Scraps. Same thing. Oh, I said the wrong name, didn't I? Excuse me, let's back this up. Becky Cotton won from Ambassador Crochet. And Teresa Patton won from Stitches and Scraps. I said the wrong name with the wrong thing. Let me repeat that. Becky Cotton, you won a free pattern from Ambassador Crochet. Teresa Patton, you won a free pattern from Stitches and Scraps. All right. Again, both of you, you can click back on yesterday's video or last week's video, or you can just go straight to their Facebook page. Tell them you want a pattern from Sarah's Birthday Bash. All right. The next one is from Crystallized Designs. This is Terry Blackett. B-L-A-C-K-E-T-T. -T. My handwriting's hard to read sometimes. Same thing. You can go to last week's video or you can go straight to her Facebook page. All right, now we have Trifles and Treasures, and the winner is Connie Manning. Go to her Facebook page or go to last week's video and tell them both that you're the winners for Sarah's Birthday Bash. All right, let's move this down. Our last free pattern is Rhonda Leach. Oh, I left the A off your name. <laughs> All right, you want a free pattern from Callie's Clips and Crochet Creations. You can go to her Facebook page or you can go to last week's video again and click on it and tell her that you want a free pattern from Sarah's Birthday Bash. Now, the last winner, and I'm going to click it back up here so you can see the prize. There we go. This was the, this was the gift that we're giving away. It comes with the loom yarn the hook the needle and a fun bag i'm gonna show you the back so you can see everything now you don't have to make a dog sweater if you don't want to look you can even make it for a cat it also has those buttons by the way all right and the winner is are you ready michelle Saliga. i'm gonna i'm gonna put it back down so you can see the name there we go Michelle Saliga. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but it's S-E-L-I-G-A. Now, Michelle, you just need to contact me. You can either um, email me or you can go to just to the messages and tell me I am Michelle and I won the prize on your birthday bash. All right. Now, all of the designers will know who won because um, what, I, what I will do, I have a list. And once this video is over, I'm going to post that list so that they will know who is going to contact them. All right. Now, I've already clicked around to find out if these people are real. I had an issue a couple of giveaways ago where the person contacted me because I was the one giving away the item at the time and said they were this particular person. And I had the label all ready to go and then I got a second one that said they were this person and the address was nothing the same. And so I did a little checking on and it happened that they had a Facebook page and I got it to the right person. So that's why I'm going to be giving all the designers a list with your names on it and they will not be contacting you. All right, you need all of you that won those patterns need to contact that designer for yourself. And that's why I wanted to show you the picture. Now, Violet is February's flower. So I thought it'd be fun just to, to do that today. And this is just a really simple pattern. Better pop my glasses on so I can see what I'm going to do. And you can make these violets and wear them in a clump. You can make a pin. You can wear one. You can put it on a hat a bag, a scarf, 
anything that you want to. One thing I used to do is I used to make a bunch of flowers and when I would buy a new uh, cardigan sweater, I would make sure I had yarn in that color. So I have a lot of yarns in different shades. I was trying to do one in green because I wanted it to look like a clover, which we'll, we'll do something like that in a few weeks. But I have about 10 different shades of green because of it. <laughs> All right, so what you're gonna need is two colors of yarn and I'm making them purple because they're violet, kind of an orchid purple. And we're just using worsted weight number four yarn. I'm using an H hook, which is a 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need that needle, and you'll also need a pair of scissors. And if you want to put it on a pen, you can get a, a um, brooch pen, or you can just, uh, what I do is I just use safety pins. That way I can move them around on different things that I want to wear, all right? All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And I'm using yellow for the center, kind of a goldy yellow for the center of the flower, because that's what violets have as a yellow center. I'm going to chain five. And I'm going to join this into a circle. Pull the tail through. I'm going to snug this down. And then I'm going to make that stay knot. Now, a lot of people ask me often if they can use a magic circle or the magic ring, and that's totally fine if you're more comfortable with that. I really prefer doing it this way because every time I do a magic ring, for me, it just opens back up and it doesn't stay secure. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in through the chain five, pull up a loop, and we're going to chain two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch eight half double crochets. This chain two does not count as any kind of a stitch. It's just to bring our yarn up so that we're on top of the ring. All right, so yarn over, go in that chain five loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through all three of those loops. There's one, so I need to do seven more so we have eight, two, three, there's four, and it is going to be a little snug, but we want to get all eight of them in there. Six, seven, and eight. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to join to our first half double crochet, not the chain two, but the first half double crochet. Put our hook through, pull up that loop, and then put that loop through the loop already on our hook, and that's a slip stitch, all right? Now we're gonna cut our yarn because we're gonna join in our lavender or purple. One thing you'll notice is you might have a hole. If you turn that over and gently pull on that string, your hole's going to close right up, and then we can weave that in a little bit later. All right, let's find the end of our purple here. Well, where did you go? There you are. All right, so we're gonna join in our purple, or our lavender, and even though I'm making these purple because they're violets for uh, February, you can make this flower in any color. I do them in hot pink and bright yellow and lots of different colors. All right, so the way this is gonna work, we have eight half double crochets. In the first half double crochet, we're going to stitch just a single crochet. Then, in the next half double crochet, we're going to stitch, let me check my notes, four half double, I'm sorry, sorry, four double crochets. Yarn over, go in that next half double crochet, and stitch a double crochet. So we're going to stitch four, and this is going to make our petal. Right in that same stitch. One more, and that makes a nice wide stitch that looks similar to a violet. The next half double crochet, we're going to single crochet. One petal made. Now we're going to repeat this. Four double crochets in the next half double crochet. One, two, three, and four. All right, single crochet in the next 
Now we have two petals made. Repeat four double crochets in the next one, two, three, and four. There we go. Single crochet in the next, and this brings us to those last stitches. We've got three petals made. Now I'm going to make the fourth one. One, two, oops, get in there, <laughs> three and four. And looky there, I got a little knot. <laughs> All right, now we're just going to single crochet in that last single crochet. We'll turn it over. And if you're going to sew this onto something, leave yourself a long tail. If you're just going to weave it in, Go ahead and cut it short, which is what I do. I'm going to show you on the back. Make sure my hole is closed. I'm gently just pulling on these strings. And then we'll just use our needle and weave it in. Because we don't want a hole in the center of our flower, right? Okay, and I'm not going to do all of them, but we just weave those in, and that makes a nice violet. Let me move back over. All right, now I love making these violets because you can stick them on anything, like I said. You can, and you can even put them on like a coffee cozy, you know, a hat, anything that you want to, really. And they're fun. I like to bunch them up, maybe put them on like a headband. I mean, they're just a great little flower to make, and you can make them in all different colors. So anyway, <clears throat> now I hope everyone got a chance to clink in. If you didn't, clinkity clink clink. All right, let's real quick just talk about, I know our time's running out because we have a little bit longer video today, but let's just talk real quick about what happened this week at Posh, Posh, at Posh Pooch Designs. <laughs> Now behind me, you'll see, this is our date night cow, and it's made from latte cakes. And it only takes about half of this to make it, a little over half. And so I have enough left here, I might have to make something else with it. <laughs> and that's our date night cow, super easy. We did the video and we did the pattern, so that's there. Then we did these fun little coffee cup coasters and this is a pattern I call revisited I wrote it um, I looked on my blog it was like um, 2011 when I wrote it so that's quite a long time ago and so anyway we updated the pattern added this little flower to it it's really cute and then we did a video and that's out there for you and that's kind of something that we're trying to do is take some of our old patterns that we wrote quite a few years ago and update them and some of them were using like newer yarns because some of the yarns that we did uh, used back then <laughs> you know six or seven eight years ago you can't find them anymore and so we're doing some of them with some newer yarns and adapting them to things that maybe you can you can use all right now yesterday we did square number two for our um, crochet along we did the solid granny Last month we did the basic granny square. This month we did the, sh the solid granny. And like I said, if you don't know what we're doing um, with the crochet along this year, it's called Grantastic. We're starting with the basics and each month we'll move into a more complicated square. And by the time we hit the 12th square, you'll be a genius and a pro at <laughs> making granny squares. Just remember what I always say, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes perfect confident because when it comes to crochet it's okay if it's not perfect that just means that, that you added love and art and a piece of yourself to it all right okay i think that's everything we've got um this week one other thing i did find some interesting yarn this week i just remember i was at, at hobby lobby and i found this and i'd never seen it before i'm wondering if any of you have worked with it before it's called scrubology and um, it, it's 100% nylon, and it feels like 
Um, years ago, we used to cut tool, the small tool, into strips, and we would make um, scrubbies out of it. And that's what this feels like. I got a blue one and I got a yellow one, of course, because I love bright yellow. <laughs> and I'm going to do a video on these and I'll let you know what I think of them, okay? One thing, when I used to do those nylon scrubbies, it used to just hurt my fingers like crazy. And this, although it's got that scrubby edge to it, it doesn't feel as rough. So anyway, I'm going to let you go. We did a lot today. And I know someone said to me, I just jam pack way too much into a video. But I love to, to give you as much information as I can. And I don't want to let you go because I enjoy our time together. I love seeing your names as you comment. And, you know, I'm looking through, seeing if there's any questions um, Tammy, you've tried it and said you really like it. Marilyn, you're from Colorado too. Well, that's, I'm in Parker, Colorado. I love it here. And, um, I, I told someone today and I put it on my other Facebook page. I absolutely feel like we're in a snow globe because we get a day of sun. Then we get a day of a bunch of snow. I've got a five foot drift in my front yard. <laughs> And then it's good again, and then it snows again, and it's like somebody keeps picking up that snow globe and reshaking it. <laughs> I'm one of those weird people that love the snow, and I'm, you know, living here is beautiful, gorgeous. I have a wonderful view to Pikes Peak from my uh, back deck. And the thing I love the most is, you know, I'm originally, uh, I grew up in Oklahoma, and they didn't know how to drive on snow or how to deal with the snow. Up here, people are so calm and so relaxed, unless they're from out of town. <laughs> They're really good at clearing the snow off the roads as well. All right, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you again for being a part of Posh Pooch Designs. Because as I always say, I can't do what I love without you. Have a great week, everybody.